All right, welcome to another BAME Dev video making Wraith Binder, the multiplayer spinoff to Songbringer. And today I'm quite excited to be sharing that I've got the procedural animations finished with uh, basically I'll model things in uh, Blender, or sorry, model them in Magic of Voxel, import them into Blender, and then animate them in Blender with keyframes and rotations and translations and all that. And then, <clears throat> And then my C++ code goes and compiles all those into um, into actual Magic of Voxel files again, which are loaded into the Wraith Binder engine and and played like this. So we've got right now I've got these exporting out to 30 frames a second, but I could increase that to 60 frames a second later. This is just more for uh, just load speed, and uh, right now just keep it at 30 frames per second. But it's looking pretty nice. I have these 30 frames per second animations. I'm excited about this because in Songbringer, the, I had the maximum of 10 frames per second, and here in Wraithbinder, I could do 60 frames a second, 100 frames a second. This is pretty exciting. But even more exciting, as as a solo developer, I need to find as many ways to save time as possible. And what's neat about this is I can go and uh, create one single simple model in Magic of Voxel for certain elements like this sword right here, or this hairstyle, which is actually a helmet, you know, this helmet or, and or hairstyle or these hips, maybe a different belt, whatever. I have to, I can model it once in, in uh, Magicka and have it procedurally animated with Blender. So I can really save a lot of time because I can create one animation file in Blender that can apply for m many permutations of, um, of everything because every single one of these body parts can be exchanged for something else uh, like if, if I wanted to make this character female right here I could just change out the chest and the hips and um, for something else and boom it would look a lot more female than this or uh, give him a helmet or give take away his cape whatever the heck I want to do all these permutations can be off of one single blender file um, and so here's what this blender file looks like right this is what the animation looks like when we're, we're viewing it here in Blender. This is basically, it's, see these transforms are going and they're going at a sub-pixel or a sub-voxel level, right? This, for example, this shoulder right here is sliding forward on the y-axis over time and then slides backwards on the y-axis over time. So inside Wraithbinder, you're never going to see it actually at that midpoint, it'll snap to one one voxel or the other, and you can see that reflected here. This is the cat in this cache. This is the output of my model compiler. So here is one frame. Actually, it's it's kind of weird if I try and um, change the camera on you. So, but here we're kind of like walking through the animation. See, so as it finally snaps to a certain Y position, it will actually move the model a little bit. I wish you could see it a little bit clearer, but you can definitely see it with the head. See how his head goes down and squats down here at this frame number eight, or actually frame number nine. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, we've got Blender for animations, and these keyframes are all set up here where like, for example, here at frame zero, we've got a certain location and rotation going on for this um, right, upper arm and those are all, all those are all parented too so they, they kind of uh, uh, compound so if this uh, arm gets rotated like if we rotated this a whole 135 or you know it would actually rotate the um, the the it's it's children as well so we've got all that going on and um, that, that works in concert with the C++ code. So I've got a whole new file here in my game engine called kitfu um, that is called keyframe.cpp. And this basically is just responsible for parsing these keyframes from Blender. So it goes and just parses the whole Blender file. And this is all based on actually, uh, based on this thing called FBT Blender. It's a project on GitHub. You can look it up, FBT Blender. And this thing will parse your um, your Blender files for you, and then you got to go and like you know find all the information inside that parsed file to to create you know the keyframes that you need. But yeah, so um, so that all gets uh, so once all the, those keyframes are parsed, then inside model 
I've got a function which compiles everything. So this basically just parses all those keyframes and then goes and loops over all the frames that it wants to output. So we've got a, we've got a given um, frame rate um, output and right now, what is this? Oh yeah, this gets passed in right now. So you can pass in a certain FPS out. I've got it currently set to 30 frames per second. Um, but you can set that as high as you want and then it'll loop over all those frames. And for each one of them, it compiles um, every single one of those body parts. It compiles them all into one new, um, basically just an array of voxels. That's all it is, a vector of voxels. So every all those voxels get um, it's like, for example, let's see, like just this, uh, let's look at a simple body part that's kind of like, uh, the head, the head's a really great one to, to uh, uh, there we go, head, right? It'll take this head and translate it based on, uh, the information from, from the keyframes, translate it, rotate it. I've got scaling data in there but I don't have it actually doing any scaling yet, but I think I'm gonna add that. So it'd be nice if I could scale in just one axis at a time, just barely and figure out how to make scaling look really good. In certain situations, it's really nice. Like for example, um, in pixel art and voxel art, what's really great is you can kind of exaggerate um, certain movements and you can stretch out body parts. And that's what's so great about pixel art and voxel art is that you can really exaggerate things when you're when you don't have um, when you don't have to. It's almost like a cartoon in a way. So, for example, look at this uh, in this whole animation with the idol. I've got it. I uh, so um, see his his left and right hands are never touching. And re in really this in this animation right here, his hands should be touching, and he should you be using both his hands to hold the sword. And that would look a little bit better in this in this situation. But to keep things simple right now, I didn't want to rotate this uh, lower right arm so much because I want that to not be, because when it rotates, sometimes it can create these gaps in voxels. I haven't actually perfected the whole model compilation yet, but it would be nice if I could stretch out a limb a little bit. Like for example, in this right here, I could if I could stretch out this, um, lower left arm a little bit. I could get it to maybe touch that arm without it looking too weird. But it also would be a, uh, an, a good option to get the rotation so that it doesn't ever create any gaps. So lots of little things to do to perfect this and make it awesome, but this is really, really exciting to have it this far. Um, I'm very happy with these, this output. This is something that I could really couldn't achieve with animating every single one of the frames by hand in Magic of Oxal. Um, and it also is gonna save me a ton of time. But we have, this, there's another issue here when it actually gets projected into two dimensions, which is what's happening here. Um, this is how it, uh, the only way for, for Wraithbinder to cope with so many voxels is to actually convert everything down into 2D at some point. It is actually purely 3D, like if I were to stick his arm into something else, you would only see part of his arm, but it, it does get translated into two dimensions in a way. Um, so, but you see how the sword is, there's a few gaps in parts of the animation, there'll be a gap in the sword. And so there's something, I, I need to figure out how I can um, uh, get those voxels or when they get translated into pixels so that they don't ever get orphaned like that. I, I don't want to see parts of the sword, uh, uh, you know, chopped up like that with little pixel gaps. So that's primary on my mind right now, I'm trying to figure that out. But other than that, um, I got to go and create a whole bunch more animations here in, in uh, Blender. Uh, this is my first animation here. Um, we've got the player idle. And um, I've also got a player rig, which is just, you know, the basic starting point for everything. And everything's really nice and I've got everything parented and, and uh, also all the, the positions are very simplified now. I used to, everything used to be based on 0.1 meters in Magicka and now it's based on one meter. So if I move something up, let's go to the front view and I wanna move his head up by one voxel, for example. Um, I just have to press one 
instead of 0.1 on my keyboard. But that's going to go a long way to saving time and energy and when I do a lot of the an these animations because it's a lot easier to just type 1 instead of 0.1. Um, so there you have it. That's it for this video. Just a little covering of how this whole uh, procedural animation system works. And I'm really excited to progress with this. This is super duper uh, just rewarding and fulfilling as a game developer to see this come to life. So thanks for watching. Catch you next time.